Hi, hi. Welcome to your bonus coaching call for Leave Your 9 to 5 Live. I am so excited that you are here. I am so excited to welcome you to this program and to the next eight, nine with this call weeks. So if this is your first time as part of a group coaching um, experience, then I want to let you know that you are, um, you're in for a treat, first of all. <laughs> and I'm excited to have you here. Um, the way that these calls work is that you can ask any question about anything in your business anytime during the program. So while we will have um, a theme for each week that you will be getting the content around for that particular week, you can ask whatever you want, whatever is helpful for you, whatever is on your mind in that particular week. Cool? So know that today what I'd love to do is I'd love to have you all give a brief introduction of yourself before you ask your question. Or even if you don't have a question today, then I'd love to um, have you introduce yourself anyway. And know that I am here for you over the next nine weeks. I am here for you. This whole program is designed to just be really um, supportive of you. I'm so glad that you've decided to show up. I love that we're starting strong with so many of you joining live today. And I love that you're here for this bonus early bird orientation call. So I'd love to dive in and give you all the chance to just briefly introduce yourself and ask a question. So who has a question? Because obviously this week we are not, um, sorry, I'm looking for it. We're not uh, working around a particular theme other than like preparing for this program, orienting ourselves for the next eight weeks, setting ourselves up for success between now and the end of 2017, baby. Woohoo! So, um, <laughs> with all of that said, uh, you can ask anything. Um, let's do it. And you'll get a feel for this a little more as we, as we dive into it. But who wants to go first? Caitlin says, I'm at work. So just listening in, I will try to do an intro in chat. Beautiful. Right. So if you join, if you join, um, zoom on your computer, um, or maybe on your phone, you guys need to tell me because I've never joined on my phone. Um, you can use the chat feature and you can ask questions that way. Um, you can add comments, you can cheer each other on, give each other insights. Oh yeah, me too. Or like, Hey, maybe you could try this. Okay. Caitlin says it works on the phone too. Awesome. Caitlin. So do you just literally use the chat? Like, are you calling in from the link on your phone or are you calling in from, um, the phone number? This is so helpful. Or like from the iPhone one tap number. The lesson there, giving us a little lesson as we get started. Technology. Okay. Zoom app on iPhone. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So for any of you who have iPhones, check out the Zoom app and then you can just type right into the chat there. I'm getting my um, charger out. Beautiful. Thank you, Caitlin. So who would like to introduce themselves first? It's okay if you don't have a question. It's okay if you do. All right, Joanne says, I'm happy to start. Awesome, Joanne. So the way this will work is when you have a question, um, I will open up, I will unmute you. I will open up your phone um, or uh, computer so that you can ask a question. Okay? And let's go. So Joanne is first. All right, Joanne. Joanne, do you want to be on camera? Or do you want, or I'm sorry. Yeah, Joanne, do you want to be on camera or do you want to just be on um, audio? It's up to you. I'm actually happy to remain on audio. Okay, perfect. 
Is that all right? Yeah, totally. I just came from your call, the money one, and I absolutely yeah. loved it. Awesome. So Joanna's talking about the live stream I just did in my group and on my page, um, all about my top money lessons learned from um, building two six-figure online businesses. So you can check that out later if you want, if you want some additional inspiration. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I came in a little late, so obviously I'll catch up, but I realized that I also have quite a few money stories, but that's not what, you know, what we're about here. I just want to speak a little about my transition um, from corporate because this is something that I actually feel so emotional about when I think, you know, I was in a corporate job. I was working for the United Nations in Nairobi for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I was really, really discontent uh, for most of those years. But I had this guilt surrounding, surrounding transitioning because everybody would tell me how lucky I am. You have all these perks. You have all these benefits. You have all this travel. What kind of mad woman, you know, would, would make the decision to leave? And I stayed in this position purely because... Of people. Mm. I'm such a people pleaser. I didn't realize. I have since changed. I've worked on myself. But I made the decision to leave a year ago. And as I said in my intro, it was the best yet most scary decision that I've ever, ever, ever made. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm happy to report here today that I was really having an issue with my niche and I realized that it was a mindset issue. I was still clinging to my former job, but you really helped me unlock that. And I realized that where I was a year ago, that's a person that I want to serve. So I now help corporate women transition from their nine to five jobs and align themselves to their life purpose, mm. get clarity on their life direction and create a purposeful exit strategy and plan of action so that they can live their one royal life with boldness and caring. <laughs> so I'm really excited that and, I, and as I shared my mission really is to empower women at a global level. For those of you who don't know I come from Kenya, I'm from Africa. I have been very privileged you know um, to get a lot of international exposure. So my mission is to empower people at a global level, empower women, not people, at a global, let me be specific, empower women at a global level to honor themselves because I realized I did not honor myself by sticking in a job that I did not like to live authentically, um, living authentically, uh, you guys know that word, is I was not living authentically. I was living a lie. I knew I, I needed to leave the job, but I clung to it because of ego. It was ego, really. And apart from ego, also external validation. Mm -hmm. And to live to their full potential. I shared with you guys uh, my story of cancer. I'm, I'm a cancer warrior. I don't call myself a cancer survivor. I'm a cancer warrior. And I realized that you have one life to lead. And you don't get to joke with that. You don't joke with your one royal life. And for me, that's why my mission is very clear. To empower women at a global level to honor themselves, live authentically, and live to their full potential. So, Christine, I just want to thank you so much for having me in this community. And I, I honestly know that this is just, it's like, um, well, I have to say this. You know the way you know and you know and you know? This is like my breakthrough moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally feeling I'm at that point. You know, when a caterpillar is just about to turn into a butterfly, mm -hmm. I'm like literally at that stage of metamorphosis. I, I can feel it. Like my body is actually going through physical, mm -hmm. physical trans. I feel like I'm going to start crying. My body is actually going through physical pain of, of mm. the, the thing coming out. Does that make sense? Totally. And I'm so glad to just report here before I finish because I could talk forever because I'm so excited that I signed up a client last week, um, Christine, at the highest amount that I've charged. And um, when I gave her the, the invoice, her invoice, she just said, sign me on. Mm sign me on and it's to help her transition her nine to five mm. 
So what we are doing with you will really set the stage for me. And this has never felt, for lack of a better word, it has never felt more right. It's just felt so, so right. Beautiful. I love that. And how to tell us how you connected with this client. Congratulations. What a celebration. Woo! Yeah, um, just like you, 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 your business model is one that I really am aligned with because I do a lot of live events as well. Mm. I've had the pleasure of doing, hosting live events in Kenya and in, and in the UK. And that's part of the work that I'm going to work with you, you know, as we proceed. So I had this workshop in Kenya, which, well, two workshops, which brought in about 70, 70 something women, like in total. And she was very keen to, to transition. And that was in January. And I sent her a message and just asked her, so how is your transitioning going? And she said, it's not going, <laughs> nothing, you know, I haven't done anything. And I said, would you want to hop on the, on the phone with me? You know, and Christine had given me this beautiful, beautiful script that I use. And I had a conversation with her and I asked her, if not now, then when? That was my question. I never would have done that before. I mean, I would like, I'd like sort of tiptoe around them, like really, you know, molly coddle them. I don't know if you know, you know, like sort of tell them, oh, you're going to do it at the right time. But this time I didn't say that. I just said to her, listen, you said the same thing in January, in October, if not now, then when? And she just said to me, you know what? Sign me up. Send me the invoice. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> So we started last week and she got her first breakthrough mm. and her first breakthrough was the tagline for her business because she wants to go into transformational leadership um, training. She's also currently working with John Maxwell mm -hmm. and was recently, she, came, she recently went for this huge conference he had last a couple of weeks ago in the US in Florida. And she said to me that she wants to do transformational leadership. And as I was speaking to her, I just got a tagline, which she loved transforming leaders from the inside out so that's oh. and i'm so excited because i was on call number one and we are together for the next three months so i can't imagine what will come out of Yay! it that's awesome okay joanne i want to make sure that the other women get a chance to introduce themselves because we have a really full call today um thank but thank you so much for sharing that you're welcome did you have a question no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just excited. I mean, okay, like, I love I'm it. Thank I love you it. so much. Thank I'm you, gonna... Joanne. I love that you kicked it off with all of this excitement. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Yay. Okay. So excited to hear more. So keep us posted. Absolutely. I will. And have a wonderful evening. Joanne's in the UK. So yeah, I'm actually on my way to Oxford. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, I, sp I studied there a semester. I love Oxford. So oh, tell us hi for me. I'll send you photos. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Yay, beautiful. All right, Joanne, I've got you muted. Beautiful, beautiful. Joanne um, and I are working one on one. So when you heard her um, mention you know, some of the things we've been doing together, that's the context for that. So awesome. All right, um, and Kalila, I will get you up next. And Caitlin says, I'm Caitlin. I own a consulting company for equine horse-based businesses. I love working with women who love horses and want to start and grow a business around that love. I specialize in building a strong foundation to grow your business from website, payment systems, calendars, social medias, etc. I love that, social medias. I don't know why I said that. Social media is what you typed, which is correct. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Caitlin. Beautiful, beautiful, and I love um, that excitement. Um, and congratulations from Mallory uh, to Joanne. Yay! All right, Miss Kalila. Hi, Kalila. Hi. You there? I am. How are you? Great. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. Yay! Yay! I just wanted to do like a really quick introduction. Yeah. Faces. Um, so for those who don't know me, I'm Kalela. I'm a medical doctor, former health insurance executive. Right now, I'm a wellness consultant and freedom lifestyle coach. And I've been working with Christine for a while, and she's absolutely fabulous, and I've been really enjoying it. It's really kind of boomed my business, both my wellness consulting and my coaching business. So I love working with ambitious women who want to start their dream online coaching business, become financially independent, and quit their cubicle 
really just one concrete step at a time. And as someone who has, I've really pivoted careers multiple times successfully, and I am loving being an online entrepreneur. Um, I help my clients they overcome fear of the unknown, get really huge clarity on what they want their dream life and business to look like, plan out and take confident action to get their online coaching business off the ground and close in their first few clients. Woohoo! So I just want to say I'm from the Cayman Islands. I'm living here right now. Um, and right now it's absolutely pouring with rain. I don't even know if you can hear that on my side, but it is pounding right now. We're in our rainy season. Um, and I love to travel. We're actually, my husband and I are heading to Southeast Asia next month for a few weeks. Where, remind me where you're going in Southeast Asia, Kalila. Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Oh, I just get chills. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited to live vicariously through you. That's a part of the world I haven't been to. Um, and I am thrilled for you living in Grand Cayman, going to Southeast Asia. You are the epitome of living the freedom lifestyle. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. And we're really excited. I'm really excited. I am so happy to be part of this Leave Your 9 to 5 group program. And I'm looking forward to getting to know all the amazing ladies in this group. Yay! Beautiful. Thank you. So any questions for me today? Um, I had one question and you were kind of touching on it on your previous, uh, your video in the um, passion group. Mm -hmm. um, when, when would you say is like, you know, we have all this mindset stuff. How are you comfortable knowing what's enough that you do with your business? Like that you're not checking your phone in the bathroom. Like mm -hmm. how do you decide that? I think it's an ongoing process like I think it's um it's, this is gonna maybe sound really cheesy but I think it's like how it makes you feel right like does it feel like you have to does it feel like a compulsion does it feel like oh my gosh if I don't do this I'm gonna miss something or is it like really fun you know I think part of it is figuring out how to be present where you are right so if you're out to dinner with your husband and you're running to check your phone and like respond to Facebook stuff in the bathroom, like maybe that's not the best way to have a date night. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, like will that stuff wait? Yes. Right. Um, but I think it's also like, okay, if I haven't been present at all for my business today, then do I probably want to check in? Yes. Right. So maybe you could give me a specific example of like where you might be struggling with this. So like this weekend and for the last couple of weekends, I've kind of taken like both days off, mm -hmm. um, like taking Saturday and Sunday off. To me, I just feel like, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, I really should be checking my notifications. I should be checking my emails. I should be doing client work, but I know for myself and how I work best is I need two days off, at least a day and a half off to two days off. And I'm like, am I losing out by doing that? I know other, you know, amazing women are posting every day and they're like, they just look like they are attached to whatever device they use. Mm -hmm. And am I losing out if I'm not like that? Mm -hmm. So what I hear you saying is should, right? I feel like I should be doing this. And also I have a fear of missing out on clients if I don't. Yes. Yes. So, but also like what you know works best for you, your business is taking two days off. Yes. So you have my permission to take two days off and I'd love <laughs> to give yourself that same permission. <laughs> that is, it's so like, I'm, I enjoy, like I'm, I'm, and as you said, like I'm present on, on my date nights with my husband, like if I'm out with friends, I for, I leave my phone at home, like I don't even bring it out with me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, you know, in the back of my mind, and they're like really enjoying something, then it just kind of pops up, oh, you know, you should be working because other people are working right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's kind of like, um, I know that I want to build a business where I take two days off a week, right? That's what you're saying. 
Yes. So why do I have to work more? Why do I have to work those two days when I'm building my business? That's not the business I want to build. Yes. <laughs> so true. <laughs> right? Yeah. So are you showing up every day, Monday through Friday? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Cool. That's enough. That's powerful. That's because it just keeps running in my head. You know, you got to be doing more. Um, and then I do step it up and it's like, okay, that's good. Now, now you got to do even more. Right. Right. So there's always going to be more. There's always going to be more. Our inbox is still going to be full when we die one day. Right. <laughs> so there's always going to be more. It's never going to be enough if we allow that to be true. Yeah. Or the other side is it, it's fear or faith, right? Those are our options. So if we're, it's never, if we're going in the never enough script, that's fear, fear of missing out, fear of like not doing enough, right? If we're going on the faith, it's I show up every day with confidence. I know that actually taking two days off is a business building activity because it allows me to focus on my faith. It allows me to say, yes, I showed up. Yes, this is enough. Yes, people will want to work with me because I'm showing up and I'm being consistent. And if I'm consistent five out of every seven days, I've also earned the right to take two days off, right? Because people know I'm going to be back on Monday. And this is the kind of business that I want to build. Plus, I know that I'm going to be 10 times more productive on Monday because I took those two days off. Yes, Does that feel definitely, good? definitely. So there have been times in my business, especially when I was transitioning, like out of running my online marketing business full time and building, um, building life with passion into a full time business. Um, and I had like two team members and, you know, there was a lot going on and a lot of it had to go through me. And so there were times when I would work, you know, a f I would work a full week and I would like break my own rule of, of taking at least one day off. And then I would be like, I should probably take a day off because I know I'm better. And it would be hard and it would be, you know, groaning and, and weeping and gnashing of teeth on my side, but I would do it. And then the next day, um, you know, we use base camp for project management and I would be in base camp, like, you know, like a little hamster in a wheel, like in a good way, knocking things off left and right, responding to things that maybe hadn't gotten done, whatever. And I remember one of my team members said to me, Christine, like you literally are getting 10 times more done than you did in all of last week. Like, please take at least one day off a week, please. And I was like, that's a good reflection. Thank you for that. So um, I would encourage you to like build your business with the values that you're very clear on and not based on what you see other people doing. I love that. Okay. That definitely resonates with me. Beautiful. And you're also going to inspire others like your potential clients. Hey, she's building her business five days a week. That means she can teach me how to do it too, right? Because you're, again, you're being congruent, you're living according to your values, not the shoulds. Yes, that's so true. <laughs> Does that feel good? Yes. Thanks so much, Christine. You're welcome. Great question. I know a lot of people um, are uh, connecting with you over this. Mallory says she completely understands. They're probably scheduling posts maybe. Um, and congrats on leaving your phone at home. And Joanne says, it's a great question. I'm now thinking my time away. I travel to Spain for almost 10 days for vacation. We'll be working on and off. Yeah. And Mallory says it will eliminate burnout in business if you're not working all the time too. Totally. Totally. So yeah, you got some great support here to be taking the weekends off, girl. <laughs> Try that and see how it feels. Definitely. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. I'm going to mute your line. Okay, who else wants to introduce themselves and, or wait, introduce yourself definitely, ask a question if you have it. Who's next? And I also want to say that um, 
Uh, we are all at different stages of our business uh, or our business dreams. So if you're here and you don't have a business yet or you don't know what you're going to be doing or whatever, like that's totally fine, right? We are all here to support each other in getting out and staying out of our jobs, whether that means you have a business right now or not. So I just want to be really clear about that. There's no shame in any part of this process. Wherever you are, we're all at different stages. We're all in different journeys, but we're all here together. All right, my, my dog just groaned when I sang. She was like, oh, not again. <laughs> Mallory says, hi ladies, my name is Mallory. I own a virtual assistant business, specializing in direct sales businesses at this time. I'm growing towards being an online business manager and will be hiring an assistant this month to help me out with graphics, updating for my clients. Woohoo! Delegating. I love it. Your first hire. I love it. I truly enjoy working with Christine. I know I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for her. Oh, that's so beautiful, Mallory. Thank you for sharing that. It's been my privilege to work with you to help you quit your job, stay out, and build a booked out business. Woohoo! All right, Kalila says, thanks so much. I find it so less tempting to even look at the phone when it's left at home. Oh my gosh, it's such a good hack. Such a good, healthy life hack even, Kalila. All right, Nancy says, I'll introduce myself and ask a question. Great. Hi, Nancy. Hello. You're unmuted. Hello. What's up? Well, um, as an introduction, I own a farrier company, which for those that don't have horses, that's a horseshoeing company with my husband and um, he is the horseshoer and I handle everything else about running the business and um, also educating horse owners, both our in-person clients and anybody who is following us online. So yeah. I'm trying to grow our email list so that I'm reaching more people at this time. You're and an author. Yes, we You're have an author. ebook out on Amazon. Yes. Um, and so my question is, um, as far as getting testimonials and, um, stuff like that to put like, you know, on the website or on just sharing it on Facebook, um, like obviously ones that we specifically ask for or, um, reviews are pretty obvious, but what about, um, stuff that's like, I don't know, Facebook comments or, you know, if you get like a private message, I have a few private messages like on um, Instagram yep. that were, that are like, you know, really positive. Like, how do you know when, I guess, what's your recommendation for when you need to get specific permission to share that? Or is it okay to just blur out the name or, you know, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. So lots of different schools of thought on this. And certainly I have done different things, but I think that um, if it's posted on Facebook, it's public. Okay. So I tend to most of the time still go in and blur out the last name. However, I don't think it's necessary. And I okay. see a lot more people just not even doing that. Um, mm -hmm. If it's posted on your Facebook page, it is totally pu public literally for anyone in the world who, who can get on Facebook to see. Okay. And so ones like, um, cause I have some articles online. So if it's comments under an article that's public, that's okay to kind of screenshot that and use it. I am of the opinion that yes, it is. Okay. And then as far as any sort of direct messaging, that was like a private message that's, you know, really positive. Um, should I contact those people? I would. I just say like, I'd love to share this. Is it okay if I do, you know, okay. and then mm -hmm. I, I could put your first name if you don't want, whatever. But most people are so happy to do that. I mean, because they sent you something because they appreciated you. Right. 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 So it's, but yeah, I think just cause it's private, you know, okay. If you want their name associated with it in any way, then I would say, yeah, definitely um, do that. You know, sometimes I will take like a screenshot of like a section of an email and I just won't even bother putting the name with it. Mm -hmm. But, and then I don't feel like I have to ask permission. Okay. It's totally anonymous, but having a name with it does lend social proof, does lend more credibility. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, I think I'll kind of look at it too as far as how specific they were. 
you know, if it's more of a general thing versus something, you know, yep. About a specific thing. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Is that helpful? Yeah, that's helpful. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks. Anything else? Uh, not right now. Awesome. I'll let someone else introduce themselves. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> All right, I'll mute your line. Beautiful. Who else wants to tell us why they're here, what they're working on, what they hope to achieve, um, and ask a question if you have one. Who's got a question? The dogs definitely don't want to listen to me sing for the next half hour or so. All right. Sparks says she'll go. Sherry Parks. I love that. It says Sparks' iPhone. Sparks. Okay. All right, Sherry, I'm going to unmute you. Hi, Sparks. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Yes. That, reminds, that reminds me, one of the ladies I used to work with called me Sparky all the time. <laughs> so cute. <What> yeah. <laughs> Sparky. Sparky. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're working on, Sparky. Well, my name is Sherry Parks, and I am a wellness coach. I specialize in helping w career women who feel stuck and unhappy and unhealthy with their lives, and I help them implement um, small changes that will bring them more happiness and joy and health where they are right now. Beautiful. <laughs> love that. Yeah. Awesome. So um, do you have a question? I do, I think. Um, so I've been mulling this over since I, I think you sent an email or made a post about the money article, the 10%. Yep. And yep. I watched, I got to listen to part of your live earlier, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I've really been mulling this over because I've consistently spent at least 10% of my income on stuff like, you know, uh, personal growth and coaching and all of those kind of things probably for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Yet, <laughs> I'm not seeing a return on that investment. Mm -hmm really you know like monetary wise mm -hmm. i mean i see a lot of personal growth yes mm -hmm. but <laughs> when is the money going to come <laughs> yeah i think that's a great question so i think that one of the things um and because i know this from working with you like in the last round um that i could we could look at is like the story that you uncovered, right? Mm -hmm. Like that shifting that story about your belief about um, making money in an unconventional way, not being okay. Like, I think that's a thing that when you started to shift that, things changed very quickly for you, right? Right. So, I guess that would be the first place that I'd like to check in there. Okay. How are you feeling around that? Is that something that you're consistently um, working through, feeling like you're making progress in? Or was it kind of like, oh, I recognize that I cleared that. I'm like, it's, you know, I'm not really focused on that anymore. Like, because I think, like, you shared that that felt really, really big, right? Yes, it did feel really big. And... Um, yeah, I probably have, have kind of stopped being consistent with my affirmation. Mm. Um, I've kind of felt a little bit like the affirmation needs to change, but I haven't figured out what it needs to be. And so I kind of just, I'm not even looking at it when I go in my bathroom or in my car or wherever I have it posted. So yeah, probably definitely, you know, probably there's some, some more work that needs to be done there, but I guess I'm just, I'm not sure what, how, uh, where to go with it, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of like I've got a new block now because it's like, oh, I had this big aha moment, but now I'm like, okay, I thought I was on the right track, but now I'm feeling like I'm not, you know, with my affirmation. Sure. 
Sure. Yes. So it's like now the affirmation has to work. And if it's not like perfect, then I not don't know what to do with it. And I'm not saying that, but some, I'm not saying, you know, and I, you know, yeah. what I'm at, right. Yes. Like, I'm, you know, laughing along with you. Right. Like, um, I think first of all, I drew you a little picture and you're not going to know what it is. Um, <laughs> so I'll tell you, it's a little match lit. It's sparks. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. I'm not an artist, but there you go. Um, <laughs> so I think that for you, I think that what I would love to see you do is um, maybe listen to, um, have you ever listened to like Louise Hay's affirmations at all? I, I don't believe I have, no. Okay. She has, um, her big thing is like all is well and I am safe. Mm -hmm. And so since that ties into the affirmation, I think that would be a place to, to look that she has a bunch on YouTube. She has a morning one and an evening one. So you might check those out to start. Um, but I would also love for you to consider maybe doing a little bit of tapping around this. Okay. Um, I posted one on the live stream that I just did, um, that you could check out. Um, but Brad Yates has a ton of, of money stuff that I have found to be really useful, um, at times when I've been feeling really stressed about money. Um, because I think what we want to do here is not necessarily have you setting yourself up going, I have to figure out how to do what I've never done before. And it has to be right. Right. But to go, all right, how do I clear some of this like weirdness that feels like a block so that I can feel clearer about what to do next? Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we know that the affirmation got shifted some things for you and now let's go deeper with it. And maybe let's use some external like experts to kind of play with it a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Does that sound good? Yes. I think it's a really great question, Sherry. I'm really glad you asked it. Cause I think we've all, we've all had times when we've been there and, um, then I think we've all had times of going like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Right. But then also I think it's, you can recognize that and sort of make the choice to go, no, I'm sparky. <laughs> um, like I am believing that this is happening for me. Right. And not to me. And like, I got to uncover this huge block and it brought me a bunch of clients. And now all I have to do is be open to doing more work. Like not like more work in a bad way, but just like showing up for the next thing. And let's see what happens when you try those two things. Louise okay. Hay affirmations and Brad Yates. Okay. And uh, do the essential oil thing. Because one thing you did not mention is you are an essential oil guru. That's true. I forgot to mention that. I love my essential oils. Ask me any question and I've got an answer. <laughs> yes, you do. I was with Emily Benson this weekend. She's like, Sherry is like really good about oils. Like I'm going to need to learn from her. I was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I love Emily. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yay. Yeah. It's going to be so fun to have her in the group. It'll be awesome. Yes. So beautiful. Thank you for asking that question. And it looks like um, Joanne says, contribution, I realize also we focus on sharing our gifts, our worth, and our value. And for free or potential clients are watching, they will see the expertise in you and start approaching you. Kalila says, lol, I'm not sure what that was about. <laughs> but I'm sure we made her laugh somehow, Sparky. So, um, so uh, yeah, it looks like, like Caitlin has a similar question. Um, and Caitlin, I can like, I'll, I'll answer that after I mute Sherry so she can go do whatever she needs to do, not sit here and have to listen to me like talk and also her be quiet. Um, but Kalila says she loves Louise Hayes affirmations are really beautiful. And Mallory says Sherry has a ton of knowledge. So there you go. All right, Sherry. So check in with me and let me know how they go. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll be looking forward to hearing that. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to meet your line. So Caitlin says, Christine, I've invested a lot into my business time and money and haven't seen the return either. I feel like I implement and apply also, and I'm starting to feel a little bit discouraged. Am I being impatient? This is such a great question. Thank you for asking it, Caitlin, because I want to just share with you and Sherry 
slash Sparky and all of you on this call that I have totally been there too. And there have times been times in my business, in this business, when I felt discouraged. Um, when I felt like I don't have the results that I want fast enough, I don't have as many clients as I want, um, I'm not making as much money as I want. And I'm going to tell you something that um, might annoy you because it annoyed me. <laughs> but I've also found it to be really true. So I'll look forward to your feedback on this. Um, and then also, whoever else wants to introduce themselves um, who hasn't yet, like, type it in or, um, yeah, text it in. Let me know. Um, all right, Mallory says she has a question next. Okay, cool. So I have always been really good at executing, right? And you are too. Like time and, you know, time you implement and apply and it's starting to feel a little discouraged because you're not seeing the results that you want. Like you're good at executing. We all are in this group. We all are. But, the dogs again. Pogo. You just won't even look at me now. I have my eye on you. He just winked at me. Oh my gosh. All right. We all are really good at executing. The place where we can shift to see the biggest growth is the thing that's going to be the least natural for us. It was for me. And that is working on our mindset. Working on our faith that we are doing enough in this business. Working on trusting, working on living the life that we want this business to provide for us. Working on creating the feeling of freedom that we are looking for this business to give us. And that's the thing that feels like it shouldn't be the thing to most of us as high achievers. Tell me if you like can relate to that. Like, really? Yeah, 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 yeah that mindset is nice, but like, um, no, but, but I just, I, I need to do more. The truth is, this has been so true in my business. When we show up trusting ourselves and doing the mindset work first, that is when the kind of results that we want start to appear. That has been true for me. That has been true for my clients. That has been true for the coaches and mentors that I have worked with, right? So I think the question to ask yourself is, where can you start doing just a little bit of mindset work today? Where can you start to take the pressure off and tell a different story and to start to trust that what you're doing is working? Tell yourself that story. Start looking for reasons that it's true. Give your brain that assignment. And dial in that mindset work. And we could talk specifically about what that looks like for you if you want on this call or another time, but that would be where I would start. And I hope that makes sense. And please know that I'm coming at that from like a total space of I get it. I've been there. And this is the thing that has worked for me and that I see working for my clients. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat. Okay. And let me know if you want to do a follow-up to get more specifics. In the meantime, I'm going to open Mallory's lineup. Khalil says, yes, that really resonated with me. Awesome. I'm so glad. Hi, Mallory. Hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Awesome. Introduce yourself. So I am Mallory. I kind of did a little introduction before. I, I actually... As of a few days ago, I, it's been a year since I quit my full-time job. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. A few, October 4th, 3rd of last year, I went from full-time to part-time. And then in December is when I fully quit the full-time. I love full that you job. keep track of these milestones. It's so cool. <laughs> So I wanted to just point that out. And then I also wanted to point out something about the mindset piece. Yes. 
because I have been struggling with that piece as well mm -hmm. too. And I've been talking with Christine about that a little bit too. And she had mentioned, cause I, I felt like I always had to work and work and work because I felt like I wasn't doing enough for my clients. Mm -hmm. And then I would tell her the responses and the remarks that I would get from my clients. And she's like, well, why do you not think you're doing enough then they're raving about you. And I think it's just, getting that mindset right. I mean, so what I did recently is I just increased my prices as of October 1st, which was a huge struggle for me because I thought no one's going to pay for my pricing. I'm going to lose my clients. No one's going to stay with me, but I knew I needed to do it because I know I needed more money. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the price I was offering was very low price even for me to think but I felt like I needed to do it in order to get my foot out there and so even with the price increase I've kept all my clients and I've had new people come to me and ask what my rates were and I gave them my rates and one of them was like well I don't have the budget right now but I'm coming back I'll come back so to hear that from people that I thought wouldn't even consider coming back to me or even using the rates that I that my new rates were was just it, it felt good it granted my rates are still low I think in my opinion but I'm working to build that up more and more I just I think it was just the first start to a new pay increase or a rate increase and to bring on someone else has been it's gonna in my opinion is going to be, I, I think where, where I, where the mindset part is hardest for me. And I don't know if anyone else relates to this is that the mindset piece for me is uncomfortable. I don't like going into my emotions. I don't like thinking through things. I feel like it's too uncomfortable at times. I don't want to go into it and try and dive into where I'm, what I can be focusing on when I feel like, well, I need to grow my business. I need to do all this. Why, why focus in on my mindset? Because it's not something that I have done for like 30 years. I mean, it's just like over the past year or two that I've really started to dive into my emotions and started to journal about my thoughts. So I can relate to anyone that feels that it's an uncomfortable process and not wanting to dive into that part of the business, but that is part of your business building process. Totally. Great insight, Mallory. So I, I want to point that out. I did have a question there too. <laughs> yeah, totally. Thank you for sharing that. No problem. My question relates to, and I feel like this might be with other high achievers as well. I have a ton of different ideas that I like would like to do eventually. Mm -hmm. And so right now I'm focusing on my virtual assistant side of my business. But then the question I have is at what point can you start to transition to other business, like to start focusing, not focusing, but start potentially building other businesses because I did have an event planning business. Well, I don't know if I'd call it a business initially, but I had an event planning concept and I had a, a Facebook page that has this event planning concept, which is, I haven't posted in it in probably a year, almost a year now, but people are continuing to, I, I see these information that says people are looking at my page. Mm -hmm. So my question is at what point do you start to, you know, add in another potential business concept or look at another business concept when you're focusing on one other business too. Yeah. So I think that's such a great question because I think especially when you're like a creative person, you always have a million ideas, right? Like I have yeah. a million, I mean, Emily Vincent and I basically like started another, you know, came up with the idea for another company while we were together this weekend. And that happens when I'm with like my mastermind partners, Garrett's like, Oh my gosh, what did you start this weekend? Garrett's my husband. Um, what are you going to start this time? Right? So like, I think the important thing is to ask yourself, okay, is this business rocking and rolling? Is my current business where I have momentum already and I built it up? Is this making the money that I need and want to live? Not right now. Okay. 
and we know why, right? Because yes. we've worked together before. So we know that um, it's been, it's been a mindset issue, right? Yes. About, about prices. Not that you can't charge more, but that you were afraid to raise them. Yes. And so you raise them a little bit and then you're going to raise them again, but it's a process for you. Yes. It doesn't have to do with how much people are going to pay you, but how you feel about it. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So I would say until this business is supporting you to the point where you can delegate enough yeah. to free up brain space. That makes sense. To focus on building something new. Yes. You keep it, you keep your focus here. Okay. You keep your focus on serving your clients really, really well and raising your prices. Maybe for any new client that you bring in, you bring them in at a higher rate, right? Okay. That's a way to effectively raise your price as soon as you can, as soon as you free up your, your mind space. And the more efficient you're going to get with your scheduling, giving yourself the time to recover that you need, not working so much on the weekends, all of those things, the more ready you're going to feel to bring on a new client. Yes. Right? Yes. So I would say then that um, that is where I want you to, um, that's where I'd love to see you focus. Like, good. you know what, if you feel like you need to get all this stuff out of your head because you're feeling really creative, inspired, and inspired about, there are a couple people who are like unmuted. So I'm just going to mute you real quickly. Uh, I don't know why Zoom unmuted a couple people, but I'm going to mute you. Um, I can hear something. Stephanie, can you mute yourself? I can hear whatever's going on with you. Sorry, Mallory. It's okay. Coming from somebody that happens sometimes. Okay, we're just gonna keep going. All right. So, um, if you want to have a download, like download your brain and brainstorm. If you want to, you know, like spend some time just going, this is my vision for this. Um, that's great. Do that, and then you know you have it in a journal, or you have it in a document, or you have it on a Pinterest board, or whatever. That's true. Yeah. And then you're not gonna lose it. Right. Yeah. Like plenty of people have an idea journal, you know, that they just write things down as they come in. And I do that all the time. And then the most important things get executed on, but that way it's written down. It's out of my brain. It's not racing around in there anymore. The other thing to think about with, to remember with this, um, Facebook page is that Facebook's notifying you that stuff to try to get you to engage more, right? Like Facebook's like a casino, right? They want you to stay on their platform. They want you to stay. True. So they're like, Hey Mallory, we're going to tell you so that you go over here and maybe you post more and maybe you spend ad dollars with us. Yeah. Right? So Makes sense. Go, okay. Facebook, like, thanks for telling me that people are watching, but like, actually that's not my priority right now. Okay. That's your yep. agenda, right? Yep. Does that help? Yep, it does. Awesome. Awesome. Any questions? I think that's it for right now. Beautiful. I think it's like you can totally give yourself permission to have an empire one day, right? <laughs> um, but let's get this one thing because any issues that you're experiencing right now with pricing, raising your prices, all that, if they're not fixed in this business, you're going to pick them up and take them to that's the That's true. Yep. So let's work on improving you, which is why this personal development thing is so tied in with business building. Let's work on you and improving your mindset and improving your rates and all of that so that you, ha you create more free time for yourself. You hire more people to help you out and you're like, oh, I love starting businesses. Now I'm going to go start this one because <laughs> this one's paying me what I need. Yep. Makes sense. Does that feel good? Yep. Okay. Such a good question, Mallory. Yay. <laughs> All right, I'll mute your line. And then Nancy says, that's how we always raise prices. New clients get the new rates first. Love it. All right, and Caitlin wanted to ask about what to do specifically with mindset. Okay, beautiful. Hi, Caitlin. Are you able to talk? Sorry, I know you said you were at work. I just realized that. You need to wait a minute. I'm guessing that's a yes. Under One the cover of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I totally used to take my side business calls when I was at work. In the hallway, outside, whatever. In my office with the door closed.
I can hear one of Fee's toys upstairs and Nanny's up there with her. Okay, Caitlin says she has to chat, all right? So I'll like stop singing and uh, I'll mute you again, Caitlin. Okay, so my headphones aren't cooperating, she says. Okay, so we were talking, I'm looking back at your last chat about, um, and I also wanna mention, if you ever can't join live, you're welcome to join and listen live anytime you want to a call. If you ever can't join live, you can always submit a question ahead of time in the Facebook group. Now, I will not be checking the Facebook group during the call because I'm here with you all who are live, but if you want to submit a question ahead of time in the group, I will make sure to, um, to answer it live on the call, okay? You have that option as well. All right, so we were talking about you, um, what, what you do for mindset. So, Caitlin, I would say, like, my favorite mindset tools are journaling, tapping, the EFT, and affirmations. Those are my favorite for my sensitive, intuitive, kind of like, you know, tend toward anxiety personality. Um, journaling, and I'm just going to like share this and then you can type whatever you want in the chat, but like I'll share this and then, yeah, give me feedback on this. Uh, okay, you say you're similar, you think. Okay, so journaling helps me focus. It helps me focus on like what I choose to believe. It also helps me to focus on what I'm going to get done today that's really important because I honestly find that what I write down that I'm going to do gets done. So from a to-do standpoint, um, that's really helpful to me, one to three things at the most. Um, then if you have time for more, great. But I would say writing down what affirmations feel really, really good to me. Like, um, one of mine was, um, for a while was like, women, um, are excited to work with me and pay in full. Like that was at a time when I was really excited about getting pay in full clients. Right. And then, um, another one of mine was influencers love sharing my content. And that just got me really excited thinking about like the famous people who are going to share my content and that's come true. Right. Um, and so I think it's like creating some affirmations that just feel really good. Feel really good when they come true. Right. Uh, think about what those things are for you. Like I book three clients, you know, I, um, people respond to my posts in my Facebook group. Um, I feel great about sales. Like wherever you feel like there's something that could be shifted, you know, I wake up with lots of ideas. I love interacting with my tribe. People show up every week to watch a Savvy Cowgirl show and they reach out to me for help. I love making offers. Like any of those things, you can go back and watch this. We are, let's see, well, almost an hour in, right? Let's do right at the end if you want to go back and, and watch, write these down. But like, Make yourself a list of things that maybe don't feel totally true now, but that would feel really good when they come true and start reading those to yourself. That's how I create, like to create affirmations. Just like, oh, it makes me feel really good. Even if it feels a little weird to read because it's not true yet, otherwise it wouldn't be an affirmation, right? Um, but you're bringing it about. And then, so I like writing those down or reading them. Yeah, you say you need to update yours, cool. And it would be good to look back and see what you've already created just by having those affirmations. And then I think for releasing some of the negativity and the frustration and getting yourself to a happier, more joyful, more inspired, more creative place, because that's when we have our best ideas, that's when we follow through on the most, that's when we enjoy our work the most, that's where I would probably use tapping to release the negative stuff, to release the frustration, and to like reconnect to the passion. And so if you have like what I would go in and do, what I do is go in and type in Brad Yates and then a symptom or something that I want to feel. So like maybe it's Brad Yates, like anxiety, or maybe it's Brad Yates, um, frustration, or maybe it's Brad Yates money. Right. And then you're going to get some options and you can pick a title that feels good for you and just tap along with him. And he makes it really easy. So those are my three top tips for mindset journaling affirmations and, um, tapping or EFT. Anybody have questions about that? Mallory says, great suggestions. Christine and Caitlin says, hadn't heard of tapping before. Yeah, okay, so Caitlin, tapping is this like, it looks really weird. Like of all the things that I do, my husband thinks it's the weirdest thing that I do. And you know, I do some weird things, um, let's be honest. 
but it uses the like um, meridians, the same meridians that an acupuncturist would use. Um, it's a form of acupressure. So it uses the meridians of the head and like the upper body. These are the meridians, like under your arm, top of your head, um, to kind of connect to like and release, connect to and release negative emotions in your body. Um, and it, I mean, it physically releases them. Like a lot of times I will yawn. Um, there have been times like when I've, you know, had some other reaction, like I've coughed or something like that. It's very strange, but it was developed for people with severe PTSD and severe phobias. And they studied it. They found it was having these great results to help women or everybody overcome these fears and this PTSD. And so then they found that it actually helped with everyday fears, everyday stress, because it's the same, again, it's fight or flight, right? In the body. And so it's releasing negative emotions. It is um, helping you choose instead of react, right? And it's, I found it to be super powerful. So see what you think. I like it a lot. Um, and I'll look forward to hearing what you think. And if you don't like it, that's okay too. But I like it. All right. Any other questions for me today? I think everybody who is on live has spoken or chatted. I really appreciate that input. It's so great to be with you all. I love, 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 love it. And I'm already looking forward to next week's call. I'll get you all the replay. And um, I'll see you in the group. Office hours don't start until next week because this is a bonus call. The program officially starts next week. You'll be getting all of those details later on in the week, and you will be getting your module one um, workbook ahead of time this time so that you have time to work through it before our call. Thank you for joining. Thanks for being a part of this and sending you lots of love. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.